Good morning, everybody. I'm Ed Aves. I'm the publisher of El Restaurante Magazine. And I wanna welcome you to our webinar this morning on how to double your wine sales. We are gonna learn uh, some really valuable information today. This is the second time uh, that this webinar has been presented. And uh, the first was, was outstanding. So I know that uh, this one will hit it out of the, out of the ballpark as well. A couple quick housekeeping things. Uh, questions are entirely welcome. Uh, you can use the questions tab on your uh, Zoom panel there to ask questions. And you can put forth those questions at any time. Uh, we'll either answer them uh, when they come up or I'll save them for the end of the presentation. Uh, this event is being recorded so you can watch it later or share it with your friends too. Um, and last, uh, our presenter today, Tammy Lanassa, will be leading one other wine webinar for us on September 13th. So put that date on your calendar. And now I'm going to welcome Tammy. Uh, Tammy has held leadership roles in all three facets of the wine industry supply chain. However, she has always been involved on the restaurant side of the business. She began her career working for a wholesale distributor and received many awards for outstanding sales, including salesperson of the year multiple times. Then in 2008, she became a corporate beverage director, managing over $100 million in beverage sales for the upscale steakhouse chain Del Frisco's. And now for the last 10 years, she has served as the on-premise national accounts director at Fetzer Vineyards, Vina Concha y Toro, responsible for maintaining and growing all restaurant and hotel chain business within the US. She is a first level certified sommelier. Last but not least, she is a frequent public speaker as well as an experienced wine educator. With that, Welcome, Tammy. It's all yours. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, Ed. As last time, we we enjoyed uh, being together and really uh, enjoy uh, being able to help anybody out there that's interested in learning how to increase their wine sales. So speaking to Mexican restaurants and Latin restaurants, South American restaurants uh, is something that I do a whole lot. And uh, so uh, I'm really excited to help you guys. Um, just to give you a little information about my company uh, that I represent, um, it's called Fetzer Vineyards Vina Conciatoro USA. We're actually about to change our name in July to Vina Conciatoro USA. So um, because Fetzer Vineyards just doesn't communicate the breadth and depth of our portfolio. But I have lots of experience in the wine business personally, but also with uh, wines that sell very well at Mexican, South American, Latin cuisine restaurants. So very excited about that. Um, we are the largest landowner of vineyards in the world. We have uh, vineyards in Chile, Argentina, and, uh, and California, and over uh, 30,000 acres planted to grapes, uh, much more that we own. We're also all about sustainability. You hear a lot about sustainability, I think these days, more so than ever, but we are actually pioneers of sustainability. Uh, we have uh, been doing this for a long, long time, and we've actually moved on to what we call regenerative development. So we are actually uh, beyond sustainable in all our practices, which is something that we can help you do as well if you're interested. Um, but just want to let you know that today's agenda, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to create a work, working wine list. You know, I can imagine whoever's listening, um, you know, if you're in a Mexican restaurant, you're selling way more margaritas than you are wine. Um, I would imagine most people that are listening, wine is not a huge percentage of your sales. However, um, it's important to think about. And as our on-premise business really comes back and comes back strong, and look, I know you're still having problems with staffing issues and supply issues, and it's very, very challenging. Uh, it always has been, though, hasn't it? It's always been a difficult industry. I have more respect for restaurant owners and operators um, than, than most other uh, industries because it's very, very uh, challenging and you have to have a passion for it, a real passion for it uh, to, to not only be good at it, but to 
uh, stay in it and, 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 and enjoy it. So we're going to talk about creating a working wine list. We're going to talk about how to engage your staff to sell more wine or sell wine at all. And then the best ways to promote wine. So I'll just dive right in. So if you're creating a working wine list, there are some things that you need to think about. First, you need to think about, are you selling wine right now? And if you are, maybe uh, evaluate or reevaluate your current offerings. So are you just offering a house red and a house white? Are you actually listing the wines by brands? I will tell you that um, one of the things if you're... Um, doing, you know, just look at, look at what you're doing now. I'm sure you've looked at your competition as to what they're doing. Look, here's what I know. You're not selling a ton of wine, so you don't want to have a ton of wine offered by the glass because it'll be wasted. However, you want to be a restaurant that says, I sell wine. So um, we're, we're, I'm going to work with you on that. Ask yourself, are you selling any wine? Are you selling wine? Or are you just, uh, you know, um, warehousing wine? <laughs> and offering it, or are you even offering it? Do you have it priced right? Think about that. Um, you know, I would say, um, you know, um, I see a lot of uh, uh, prices out there that are too low most of the time when it comes to Mexican restaurants. So maybe you need to, to adjust that and make sure that you're not offering things too low, but also, you know, you wanna be reasonable as well. Does your wine taste good? This is something that, um, you know, if you're offering wine by the glass and it's not a huge mover, then nine times out of 10 restaurants um, are serving wine that is bad, that, you know, wine is a food. It's just like a food. So the minute you open the bottle, the oxygen gets into the bottle and it is deteriorating. There are things you can do to help your wine taste good. And we'll talk about that. But definitely, definitely, definitely you want to make sure, taste your wine at least once a week, make sure you're doing good. Would you drink a second glass of this wine yourself? You know, especially if you're only offering house wines, you probably picked it for, it tastes okay and it's a good price. But, um, you know, how, would you drink a second glass of it yourself? If you wouldn't, you might want to reevaluate that. And then do you have wine for your staff to upsell? So if you're offering a uh, house red and house white, um, do you have something else that your staff can offer that they say, oh my gosh, this is the best wine ever. You have to have it. Uh, even in a very casual setting, people will, that are interested in wine will definitely pay more for it. And then can your sp staff speak to and sell your wine? Do they even understand how to, you know, the basics of wine and how to speak to someone who's interested in wine? Um, think about that. Ask yourself those questions. So the first thing you want to do is you want to keep it simple, right? You're not a wine destination. You're not trying to, you know, have 1500 uh, wines on a list and have this incredible wine cellar. However, you want it to be known that not only do you sell wine, but you know about wine. So limit the number of wines you offer um, but offer more than two. So a lot of times I see the mistake of going to a restaurant, um, very casual, and they'll offer a house red and a house white. They won't even say what the name of the wine is or where it's from. And I think that's a mistake, first of all, just to offer two, but then also just to say house red and house white, because you wouldn't say, you know, house beer. <laughs> you wouldn't say house cocktail. So um, you need to, to actually list it. Uh, feature the top varietals. So the varietals are the types of grapes and Chardonnay and King, I mean, Chardonnay has been queen and Cab has been king in the wine business as long as the wine business has been around. So you definitely need to have a Chard and Cab. Sauvignon Blanc is actually one of the fastest growing varietals right now. So, um, you know, if you're going to have more than two, uh, which I suggest, I really do think you need to think about Sauvignon Blanc. And then Malbec is great with your cuisine. You know, Malbec is prim primarily uh, best from Argentina, although there are some Malbecs from other parts of the, the South America and, and the world that are incredible. Um, but uh, that's where its home is. And so uh, it's, it's a wine that really, really, really lends itself um, to, uh, to the South American Mexican Latin cuisines. You want to list the name, the appellation of where it's from, California, Chile, Argentina, Mendoza, and the cost on the list. Some people make the mistake of not listing the, the price on the menu. And we have found through marketing research that that is a, uh, it prohibits people from actually 
purchasing because they're not sure and they're so they don't want to ask and so they don't end up even ordering so make sure your cost is on the list and you have spilled out the name properly and the appellation then price at the buy the glass at the price you paid per bottle or slightly more so this is the way i like to say it so um look if you're paying if you get a house wine that you're paying three dollars for um you know you can charge a little bit more for that okay you can charge five or six um dollars a bottle i mean dollars a glass for that wine you don't want to charge so less that it appears to be you know uh very very uh inexpensive cheap you don't want to cheapen it so i would think about five dollars would be the least amount you would want to charge for a glass of wine but i would write i would uh, argue that six or seven would be the right uh, amount but when you're talking about wines that you're paying a little bit more for, when you're paying seven or eight dollars for a glass of a bottle of wine, I would charge definitely seven or eight dollars. So when when the bottle is opened, the goal is once a bottle is opened for, to serve a, a glass that you have at least recouped the money you spent on the bottle. And then if you want to sell higher end wines, consider um, a Coravin. It's a uh, it's a a wonderful, brilliant technology that actually puts a little needle through the cork and doesn't release any oxygen and it keeps the wine fresh for a long time, uh, weeks. And so you can um, basically uh, use a Coravin, serve a high-end wine by the glass and you won't lose or waste any wine. So consider that Coravin is maybe $200 um, and, and it will last you a long time. Uh, one thing that's very helpful and will help you sell wine is to pair your wines with signature menu items. So even, uh, you know, if you are a restaurant, and I would assume that that sells more margaritas or beer than you do wine, it still makes a difference to show that you are taking it uh, up a level, that you care about your wine business, to just pair a couple of your menu items with wine. So next time you reprint your menus, think about that. So the other thing you want to do is create a working wine list that's appealing to wine drinkers. So wine drinkers, like I said, expect to see more than a red and white wine list. We talked about that. You want to keep your by the glass wines tasting fresh. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can, uh, when you open the bottle, have your staff put the um, date on the back of the bottle uh, labeled where no one can see, but they can see so that they know it's been opened in this date. And um, and then, um, you know, maybe uh, once you open a bottle of wine, I would say you need to serve it within three days. Um, uh, I, th I think longer than that, uh, you're, you're really not serving fresh wine. But during that time, if you want to even keep it fresher a little bit longer or keep it more fresh during the three days, you can do a couple different things. There's a wine preservative spray that you can buy and it lasts a long time because it only takes one little squirt um that that your servers or staff can be trained to squirt in the bottle of wine um that actually keeps um the oxygen out of the bottle it puts like a tiny layer of of film on top of uh the wine and seals it and so it makes it last a little longer that's one thing you can do you also can buy um these vacuum seal little tops that um that you just have pump and have your staff do that uh at the end of a shift every night and it doesn't take but a couple of times for it. And it, and it just makes it to be fresh, uh, just like you know, fresh guacamole or anything else that you would sell, it, it tastes better and people are, are more apt to drink a second glass. Um, if, you, if you offer only screw cap wines, you can do that for sure because screw cap wines are so simple for servers. If you're not selling a ton of wine, I almost recommend that you do that and so you you know there's so many available now um it's something that's very very easy so i i'm i am in um restaurants a lot um and i live in san antonio texas and so i'm in a lot of mexican restaurants and if i ask for a glass of wine um it's it's so easy for a server if it's a screw cap uh wine to just bring it to me or if I ask for a bottle of wine, they, they can open it. But if you're not selling a ton of wine and a server comes to the table and can't open the one bottle of wine that you were offered, it's, it's really, uh, it, it, it doesn't enhance the experience, let's put it that way. 
So you just feel sorry for them and the table stops talking and they're watching the servers, you know, scramble with this bottle of wine. So you can avoid all that if you just do screw cap wines and you can still find some really high end screw cap wines if, if you'd like to offer upsell. So train your staff to offer wine to get to guests, you know, instead of saying just, uh, you know, can I start you out with something to drink? That's what a lot of people say. Can, a lot of servers, can I start you out with something to drink? Well, it's a given you're going to drink because you're there to eat, unless you can't eat and drink at the same time for some reason. So uh, why don't you have them suggest? And suggestion, uh, we know from marketing research that 80% of people before they walk in the door, believe it or not, do not know what they're going to drink. <laughs> and it's determined by the server suggesting. So can I start you off with a margarita or a glass of wine today is a great way to say it. Even better than that is can I start you off with one of our top shelf margaritas or our new wine, Trevento Reserve Malbec that we have on the list. It's amazing with our food. That would even be a more suggestive sell. And then train your staff to quickly offer a taste of wine by the glass if needed to make a decision. You know, it's when I say a taste, I'm talking about a two ounce pour, very little. But train your staff and your bartender, if you have one, to feel before somebody's, if somebody's hesitating, they're saying, well, what wine is that? I don't know it. Would you like me to bring you a taste, ma'am or sir? That's perfect. And it encourages people to do that. And you're not wasting a lot of wine, but it's something that in wine destination restaurants, they do. And there's no reason why you can't do it in a casual atmosphere. So engaging your staff to sell wine, first of all, servers have to taste in order to sell. Um, if they're under 21 and they can't taste, that's different. There's different things you can do to talk to them about just the different wine words about the wines and how they taste. Chardonnays usually have fresh apples and vanilla notes, and everybody knows what a vanilla and apple tastes like, so you can talk about that. Cabernets usually have darker berry fruits, or red wines have darker berry fruits. Most people have eaten berries, so they can understand that. But if you have servers that are over 21 and you serve any wine in your restaurant, even if it's a house wine, they need to taste it from time to time to remind themselves what wine that is and what they sell. Try to taste uh, wine the same day and time once a week. So this would be ideal. If you're, if you're only selling a house red and white, which I don't recommend, but if that's all you're selling, you don't need to taste them once a week. But if you're selling three or four, five, maybe six bottles of wine um, and serving uh, three by the glass or something like that, you do want to taste with the servers once a week. Just to remind them, we do sell wine. And when I'm talking a taste, I'm talking one ounce or two ounces, not a lot, just for them to be reminded that we sell wine. This is how it tastes. And look how go good it goes with our cuisine. You can have chef make up a uh, or your cook make up just something, you know, a little bite to eat with it and show them how well it pairs with it because wine enhances food. So have your servers take turn talking about the wines to their peers during pre-shift. Um, this is something that again, in wine destination restaurants and steakhouses and fine dining, they do this. They have their servers basically talk about the wine. So if you have six wines on your list um, and, and, you know, you want the servers to learn about the wines, um, you know, give them a couple days notice and tell them, look, at pre-shift on Friday, uh, I'd like you to look up and find out information about this wine and talk to the team about it and present it to them and how you would present to a guest. Give us some wine words of something that, you know, help us be able to sell it. So Every server should be able to talk and speak to at least one red wine and one white wine on your list that they feel very comfortable offering, even if they don't like wine, even if they don't drink wine. You know, there are things on your menu that maybe they don't prefer. Maybe somebody doesn't like mushrooms or somebody doesn't like, you know, onions or whatever, but they still sell it, right? They know how to speak to it. And that's what we're asking. We're asking them to figure out one red and one white that they're very familiar with and they feel comfortable offering and they feel like it would be a, a good thing to give guests. So have your top server show servers how to, he sells to the table. You've always got one superstar server that sells not just wine, but everything, right? And so whoever that is, 
it would be probably very smart to have them show the other team members how they go about offering the wine. Because it's really about confidence. At the end of the day, it's not about knowing about the ins and outs of wines. I don't know why, but in the wine industry, we have somehow figured out how to complicate things where people are thinking wine knowledge is so much more in depth and crazy, hard to understand more than uh, beer or more than spirits. And so when, when you say, well, would you like to, you know, how much do you know about wine? People feel very intimidated. I don't know a lot about wine, but if you say, how much do you know about beer? Well, I drink beer. I like it. I don't know. They feel more comfortable, right? So you want your top selling server to show your servers so that they feel confident that that has, you're really not going to need to know a ton about wine in order to sell it. If they're too young, you can help them understand. We talked about that uh, descriptions that they can taste. So have your servers really take ownership of the wine. You know, um, it, it, stop, it comes from the top. If you don't drink wine yourself, again, just appreciate that this is something you're offering. If you're going to offer it, you want to offer the best. You want to offer something that people want to drink a second glass of and you want to be proud of it. So um, as I mentioned before, you could have them taking turns on writing the um, you know, date on the back of the opening wine, pumping to keep fresh. If you've only got one person doing this, I suggest you kind of have them take turns so that they understand the process and they know. Um, and, and, you know, if somebody says this wine doesn't taste right, um, if you're serving wine by the glass, um, you know, bring them, open a fresh bottle and bring them a glass. Um, I would recommend this every time. If you're pumping um, and, and, and trying to keep it fresh, that's one thing, but if you're not doing that, and even sometimes people will say that um, because something's off with, with the wine in their opinion, just open a fresh bottle and, and the, they should be fine. When choosing new wines for your list, um, um, you know, ask your top selling servers to taste with you and give you input. We talked about that, but uh, again, that's really important. And then let them know how many glasses or bottles of wine they need to sell that day to beat your last year's numbers. So in my opinion, when I was in the restaurant business, I let my servers know all about the financials uh, that I was going through that day as an operator. So, you know, if we needed, if we were behind and then what I did is I broke it down by how many uh, cocktails, beer and wine we sold that specific day last year and how many we need to sell today to be last year's numbers. And it became such a normal practice in their daily thing. It was written on the back of the house on a board that they just knew how many they needed to beat. And at pre-shift, they would say, okay, well, I've got uh, six cocktails, you get 12 and we'll knock this thing out, you know? And so they always wanted to beat their numbers. You know, servers, good servers are competitive and um, they'll, they'll compete just to win. Um, you wanna give them proper wine keys or wine openers and train them how to open the bottle. And um, so if you're, you know, if you're not serving just screw cap wines, you definitely wanna give them uh, you know, proper training in opening a bottle of wine. And your distributors, your wine distributors should be able to help you with this. They can even help you buy, there's always some cases of wine in the warehouse that go bad. And so uh, when, when I was opening restaurants, I would ask the distributors to bring me, you know, 10 cases of wine, 20 cases of wine that were going bad, but you could really just practice over and over with one. Just have them bring you a bad case of wine once a week and have your servers practice opening the, those bottles. So, um, you know, a, a case of wine that they're writing off anyway, and it's a great way for them to stay fresh or at least do it once a month. Ask them to create more ways for you to sell wine in your restaurant, feature ideas, menu pairings, create and offer wine uh, cocktails. You can do, uh, you know, a, uh, a special uh, feature where you're featuring uh, wines from uh, South America and, uh, and with your cuisine and, you, and uh, or you can do menu pairings like we talked about. But there's all kinds of ideas. You can, you can offer to have a wine tasting uh, from five to seven, um, in the bar, if you've got a bar or in the front room or in a banquet room or in a side room or just off to the side when you come in at a table and just offer a little tasting 
and and maybe um, you know just uh, have somebody one of the servers knowledgeable about the wine to talk to people that are coming in. So people come in and have a little taste of wine and then, uh, and you could offer an app or not, but they'll probably stay for dinner if they come in to taste wine. So incentivize and recognize. Uh, I don't know what you're doing to incentivize your staff, but um, you know, like I said, good selling servers are naturally competitive. So you wanna continue to give them reasons to win. And then regularly recognize, uh, I can't say enough about just positive, positive reinforcement. You know, if you're a parent, think about it as kids. Um, it, they respond, you know, they'll, they'll rise to whatever level that you expect of them. So if you're constantly telling them they can't do something or they're not good enough or whatever, they're going to feel, they're going to bring that to the table with a guest. If they're constant, if, if they're receiving that, if they're constantly being told, man, you did a great job. Thanks for that. That is so fabulous. They're going to bring that to the guest. So it really starts from the top. Uh, again, keep track of your daily beverage sales of each server. You could do this. You could break it down by server. So you can even do, you know, this is how many cocktails if, if your servers are um, and, and, and show at the end of the day, you know, who, who sold the most. Make it fun for them. Um, show them um, how much more money they'll make when they sell the higher end brands or the upsell sell wines. Um, show them how much more will be added to their tip and, uh, and that will get them going. And then one thing you can do if you, if you sell you know, six wines or more um, and, and you've got some servers that are really interested in wines, you could say, well, in the next six months, if you do this, if you sell so many, you know, cases or bottles or whatever, however you want to say it, um, or if we get to this level, um, we'll, I'll offer to send you to professional wine certification. Um, so, um, or, you know, for the year, whatever works. And uh, these are normally like two, $300 for level one, but they're very, very important to um, the career of a restaurant person, uh, a server, uh, anyone, uh, and any profession actually, uh, even if they're uh, waiting tables because they're trying to pay off college, it, it having a wine certification benefits in every way in every industry. So here's some ways to promote wine. You can do a 30 or 60 day menu feature. So um, you can focus on, even though you've got six wines that you're selling, uh, which, you know, if you're a casual Tex-Mex, uh, Latin, uh, Hispanic cuisine, South American cuisine, um, I wouldn't recommend you sell more than that. Um, but every 30 to 60 days, you can have one wine that you really focus on and have your team focused on. Or maybe every 30 to 60 days, you have one um, uh, red and one white that you're completely focused on. And you're doing some special, you know, here's the special today and here's our special featured wine. So um, think about that. So pick one wine that every server focuses on with a special menu for a feature period. Doesn't have to be on the menu. Train your wine, train your staff to sell this wine by knowing all about it and stories sell wine. So if they can speak to the wine and talk about how uh, this wine was um, uh, created um, by the winemaker um, that, you know, grew up in Australia and he always wanted to have an organic farm. And so when he moved here, he decided to try his hand at organic farming. And that's why this wine was created. Da, 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 da. That, that sort of story, anything like that is very helpful and for, for the staff to understand it and to embrace it and to buy in on selling the wine period themselves, but also to relay it to the guest. So you can lean on your distributors and also suppliers like myself to be able to give you all these stories to sell. And then you can have the chef or cook prepare a couple of menu items to taste with your featured wine at a pre-shift to show the servers, okay, at a fine dining restaurant, every night they're going to taste their wine and they're going to taste their uh, feature of the day, their special of the day together. And they're going to say, here's the featured wine. Here's the featured special. This is how you offer it. See how well they go together. So you don't have to go to that level. But if you are doing a special menu, 
uh, with this feature, you can taste that once a week with the menu, a little taste of the menu item, just to remind them this really enhances it. So create some fun guest experiences. Like I spoke to before, you can have a pre-dinner wine tasting. I really love this idea of having an empanada tasting. Look, even if you don't sell empanadas on the menu, it's something that I've never met an empanada that I didn't like personally, and they're really wonderful. So um, I just wanted to uh, encourage you to have a little bite of something, whether it's an empanada or a tapas, something that they can serve. And you can invite guests to come taste some this is just an idea, some South American wines with three different types of empanadas for $15. And then you offer them a discount on a bottle of wine if they choose to stay for dinner and it can drive dinner sales. Um, this is a fun idea I just had and I, and I, I, I can't help but um, uh, communicate this because it's, it's, I experienced this one time and it was so fun. So uh, every city, even small town, has a ballroom dance or uh, classic dance place that does dance lessons. And there's somebody that's a tango instructor. And tango is the dance of Argentina. So it would be so fun to have uh, a tango instructor come for a couple of hours, probably five to seven is a great time, in the bar. Uh, while guests are there and just move tables around so they, they have a little space and play tango music and have them tango or a tango couple. And then guests can take turns learning to tango with the instructor. And it's just fun. And it's a fun way to uh, highlight South American wines uh, from Argentina, maybe having bananas, just as a fun way to promote. So show guests you care about wine. Um, look at your wine glasses. What are you using to serve wine? I was recently in a restaurant that had such great, it was casual, but it had such great <clears throat> food. Um, and it was, they had thought so much about their food. Um, and it had a great atmosphere and the service was par, just spot on. It was fabulous. They did sell wine and beer and they probably sold more beer and cocktails than they did wine. And that I understood. There weren't a lot of options for wine, but there were more than six. However, they served their wine, I swear, in a beer glass. And this was in a high, kind of in a high-end area, but very casual. And when they served it in a beer glass, I, 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 you know, like the regular little beer glass, I just thought, wow, um, this is different. And I didn't, and I'm a wine drinker. And it's not like I'm above drinking wine out of a beer glass, because Lord knows I've drunk out of plenty red solo cups in my days. But when I'm in a restaurant and I'm paying to have somebody, you know, I'm not going there because I'm hungry and thirsty. I'm going there to have an experience to rest, to relax. That was not a great um, experience. So what I'm saying is you don't have to use, you know, real expensive, fine dining wine glasses. But if you could use a nicer red wine glass, you can even use stimulus red, uh, stimulus wine glasses are fine with me. I have no issue with stimulus and it makes it easier and they don't break as much. You don't have to use stemmed wine glasses, but make sure it's a wine glass, not a beer glass, not a cocktail glass, not a milk glass. I had in a milk glass one time too. And then we've talked about taking care of your wines. Have your bottles of wine uh, that you carry displayed on the back bar. So if you have three wines that you offer, six wines that you offer, have um, them displayed on the back bar um, or somewhere in your restaurant where it's not full sun, okay? Um, so that, you know, you're not probably going to serve these bottles. These are just display bottles anyway. But you want people to be able to see the labels just like you want them to see uh, your tequilas or, uh, you know, just like you do for your beers, right? And then make sure your staff knows how to speak to wine and how to properly open at the table. We covered that. So here's some quality wines we have at every price point. Uh, just to talk to you a little bit more, we have Frontera. It's our number one selling house wine. It's one of the reasons why I am doing this with El Restaurante Magazine, because uh, we are the number one selling um, house wine or first tier wine, as we call it, in uh, Mexican, Latin, and South American restaurants. And it's uh, the 750s are usually 
four dollars a bottle. We have uh, Chardonnay, Cabernet, Malbec, every Sauvignon Blanc, every every varietal that you would need. We also carry 1.5s and 187s. So you can you know do an individual serving uh, of we have Cabernet and Chardonnay in the 187s. So every time you open it, it's completely fresh, which some people prefer. Or you can go with the 1.5s. We also have uh, Cassiero del Diablo and Trevento Reserve um, at this six to $8 price national average. And Cassiero del Diablo is the number two selling uh, brand in the world. Actually, Frontera is the number eight most popular selling brand in the world. So Cassiero del Diablo is a beautiful wine to serve in Mexican, Latin, and South American restaurants. It tastes much more expensive than the price and it does incredibly well. Then this Trevento Reserve Malbec, and we also have a Cabernet in it, is amazing. Um, it is uh, on fire right now. It's incredible. It's the number one selling Malbec in the country, and it's just a great, um, great addition to any list. And then uh, we can go even higher with some of our uh, uh, Grand Reserve wines. Uh, and then beyond that, we have Trevento Golden Reserve, which is, these are amazing wines, very high end. So if you, it, it, they taste much more expensive than, than they are and so on. And we go up all the way to our $100 a bottle Don Melchor Cabernet that's uh, been in the top 100s on Wine Spectator many, many years in a row. It's considered one of the most iconic wines in the world. So here are some reasons why guests enjoy South American wines and why I really recommend them. Uh, we have California wines as well, by the way, in our portfolio. And, and if I, but I really think that Mexican, Latin and South American restaurants um, should uh, consider just like Italian uh, restaurants serve Italian wines uh, and a lot of them do. Um, I really think that, that you so almost have a, a burden to support these wines because they are um, so wonderful, so good for the price, and they pair so perfect with your cuisine. They're really made for that cuisine. So the outstanding quality in Chilean wines is, is still there. Uh, it's always been there and it's still talked about. It's one of the things that people really uh, recognize. Then they're known for world-class reds. So some of the most iconic red wines in the world have come from uh, South America. They're also known for cool climate whites because of South America's long um, uh, continent um, with having ocean on both sides and, and then these Andes mountains that provide the, the, uh, uh, all the cool climate. Um, it's just creates these amazing, very uh, uh, layered cool climate whites um, that are beautiful. The Sauvignon Blancs are amazing from there. And, you know, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is having a real shortage right now and issues with supply. So um, if you have a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc by the glass, you might consider um, uh, replacing it with a Chilean Sauvignon Blanc um, or something that is easier sourced. It's very, very um, um, cost effective too. And then there's some really unique blends that are uh, from South America. So there's one great Carmenere, which is uh, distinctive to South America that creates a really interesting uh, 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 taste in the wines that, that's perfect with your cuisine, creates some real interesting blends. And then also, um, you know, Malbec from Argentina as well. So um, I'm gonna pass it back over to um, Ed right now. Ed, I can go on and on, but I don't know how we are on time. So I just wanted to uh, stop right there and talk to you. All right. Thanks, Tammy. Uh, great info. Attendees, uh, let me remind you that you're welcome to ask questions. You can use the questions tab there. Uh, Tammy, I have a couple questions that I'd like okay. to raise. Uh, one is, uh, what is the a normal pour? What is the normal volume? And the reason I bring that up is uh, like you, I, I go to a lot of restaurants and order wine and the consistency is, seems to not be there. Sometimes I get a lot, sometimes I get a little. What, what's yes. normal and how important is it that, that the, the servers are trained to be consistent? Yeah, no, so our normal pour is five to six ounces. Most people serve five ounces. 
Um, so in a bottle of wine, you're typically going to get four to five bottles. I mean, four to five glasses of wine. Um, I, I recommend six, um, but, but it's, um, you know, you can serve as little as five, but I agree with you. There's many times when I'm out and I get this full glass up to the brim of wine. And then the next time I'm at that restaurant, because they don't really focus on wine, I get half a glass or less than half a glass. So, um, you know, it's, it, yeah, you have to talk to your servers about that. You know, one thing that I think is brilliant is, uh, there are several restaurants that have figured out to put their, um, to put their logo on a glass of wine right at the place where the server knows to pour. So if the server knows the very top of the logo is the five ounce pour or the six ounce pour, that's an easy way to get servers trained to pour the right amount. That's a good idea. Um, another question, you, you mentioned the core of them. Yes. Uh, and you also mentioned the air pumping thing. Yes. What does the, what does the Corvin do? And it, am I correct? It's like a piece of equipment or something that it, it is. handles it's, more than one bottle, right? Yeah, it handles one bottle at a time. It's a piece of equipment. There are different types of Corvins. So there's one that you can get that stays on the bottle and actually has a pourer and you just keep it on there. There's another one where you put it on when you want to use it, you take it off when you're not being used. But basically, uh, it's an incredible piece of equipment, very inexpensive for what it does, but it puts a tiny needle, a hollow needle into the uh, cork, into the wine, and, with, and it takes however much wine you want out, so a glass at a time, out of the wine without taking any oxygen out of the bottle. So it's, it's amazing because it basically, your wine is intact, as if you didn't open the bottle for the next glass, but it, so it pays for itself over time. If you wanted to, if you had a, like if at the very least, instead of having just a house, red house, white. So if you had a, a, a Cabernet and a Chardonnay of good quality um, that you could serve as a first tier, and then maybe you had a more expensive wine, it would pay for itself over time, a red wine. You wouldn't, I don't see a lot of Corvins with white, to be honest with you. So um, you, could, you could literally have that as your upsell wine and keep it for weeks like that. And so it's an amazing piece of equipment. Interesting, that's good to know. And where was, does one buy a Coravin? Where all good things come from, Amazon. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> no, it's actually called a company. It, the company is called Coravin. Um, first off, people, I'm, I'm joking. I don't know how people feel about Amazon. I don't mean to, uh, I think it's hard to get things these days. Um, but Coravin is a, uh, a company that, per, that, uh, uh, created this and, uh, and as best I know, they're the only company out there, but again, they're, you know, I saw them advertised for as little as $75 and I've seen them, uh, you know, depending on what, um, model you get, they can be up to 300. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Attendees, uh, we've got a few minutes left. If you have questions, go ahead and ask. You've got the expert on the line. Uh, let me mention one thing. Um, Tammy talked about the importance or the, the opportunity to pair wine with, uh, with dishes that are matching that type of cuisine. And on elrestaurante.com, you can find uh, several articles on this topic. If you just type in the word wine in the search bar, you'll get a long list of articles uh, that talk about pairing and, and give some examples of restaurants, Mexican restaurants or Latin cuisine restaurants that have succeeded with wine. So I, I, I offer that up as a, a resource. Well, Tammy, I don't see any other questions coming in. So okay. I think we, we can wrap this up. Thank you so much for your time today and your expertise as always. Oh, wait, one question did come in. Let me see this. Okay. Okay. Uh, this question, is there a trend in wine glasses? Now, you had mentioned the stem and the stem list, but what else can you say about that? Are, are they trending one way or another? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, uh, I'm seeing, um, a lot more stemless wine glasses out there in casual restaurants, for sure. I think they just are easier to not break. <laughs> uh, 
Um, um, but I'm, I'm seeing also a trend in people using nicer wine glasses, period, and, and using more, um, uh, you know, glasses that are specifically designed for uh, wine. Um, because wine sales continue to grow and people's interest in it continue to grow. Um, I will say, you know, 20 years ago, you would be somewhere and you would see almost every beverage served in the same glass, you know, the tea glass or whatever, and you don't see that as much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, do you have an opinion on stem glasses preserving the temperature better? I thought that was always kind of the, the feeling that the stem would keep your hands off of the temperature from affecting the temperature of the wine. Does that matter over the stemless glass or is that something people should? I, I don't find that it matters. What I do find sometimes, and this is, I'm glad you brought it up, is the biggest mistake people make sometimes is uh, they will have hot glasses right out of the dishwasher with, mm. and then pour some wine. Um, that, whether it's stem or stemless, just, oh my goodness. Uh, we drink our wine too hot to begin with. In America, um, it, a, a, a red wine being chilled a little bit never drinks bad, um, but a white wine, we definitely want it, you know, refrigerated and chilled. So that's one thing that I see as far as your uh, body temperature, raising the temperature a lot on the uh, stemless versus the uh, stemmed. I don't see that a lot. Um, I, I, I prefer them personally, just, I keep them at my house because they're just easier and I don't break them as much, but, but certainly a stem glass is wonderful. If you're, if, you know, most people love it. And so if you can do that, great. Um, but I don't think the temperature matters a lot as far as, as long as you're keeping your glasses, they're not, you know, they're clean, but they're not right out of the dishwasher clean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, uh, I don't see any other questions. So uh, again, Tammy, thank you. And attendees, thank you for your time. And as, as I noted earlier, uh, this event uh, is being recorded so you can watch it later. And uh, let me uh, thank Fetzer uh, and Vina Concha y Toro for their support of this webinar series. Uh, it is wonderful to have them uh, extending this education to our readers. So thank you so much. And thank you, Thank Tammy. you, Ed. Thank you. We're very happy to help. And with that, we're ending this webinar. Thank you, everybody.